Hello, I'm sharing a ETEP uh, robotic uh, reef scope of repair with a unilateral tar on a patient who's had um, a couple of uh, abdominal procedures uh, with an extraction port periumbilical that had been opened more than once, uh, had developed a symptomatic hernia there, which was repaired primarily by another surgeon at the time of a, another operation that has now recurred again. The hernia defect was about uh, seven centimeters wide and 10 centimeters long on CAT scan. Um, I was gonna do an ETEP approach to this. He had kind of narrow rectus muscles, so I was aware that I might have an issue with um, closure or enough uh, coverage with the mesh and the possibility of needing to do a TAR was um, suspected. So I'm high in the left upper quadrant here. I've gained direct access to the left retrorectal space and I'm doing some blunt camera dissection just to make enough room for my left mid quadrant port. I have used an ultrasound to mark the semilunar lines um, preoperatively. So now we're gonna place the uh, left mid quadrant port. I use a spinal needle to help find uh, a good um, trajectory in because I'll place this lateral to the semilunar line on the skin level but then come in um, through the uh, rectus laterally. With that port in place I'm going to put the camera in that area and do some more inferior dissection with the camera and then um, try to clear some of the space under direct vision with a, uh, a scissor. I think that this part of the procedure shouldn't be overlooked. Um, you can make bleeding and really make your life miserable. Um, so I think that it's important to take your time with this, even though uh, it seems to be tedious and not part of the main operation. You can see I created a little bit of bleeding there for myself. It's one of the few parts I edited it out <laughs> um, while I was waiting for them to hook up the cautery. But I'm just trying to make enough space that when I dock the robot, it's not gonna be too hard for me to um, finish off the uh, fully dissected um, left retrorectal space. So this is going up above the ribs and now we're looking in the left lower quadrant and getting ready to place our last trocar. I usually use a long trocar for this position because it's over the ASIS. So now we've docked the robot. Um, just finishing off dissecting the um, medial aspect of the rectus, rectus towards the linea alba so I can fully um, see it and plan my um, dissection through the posterior rectus sheath on this side. I left this largely unedited just so that you could see the steps and also in the hopes of getting a little bit more uh, constructive criticism from the rest of you. I'm doing some inferior dissection. Um, I find when this goes easy, I'll actually do a little bit of a lower midline crossover. Um, I think that it just helps uh, when you're uh, then coming later from cephalad to just pop right into that space. So with that, we'll go back to the upper midline and I'm preparing for my upper crossover above the false form. And I'll start that here. I usually do this with a cold cut. It is a good trick to ensure that you leave a little bit of lip of that um, posterior rectus towards the linea alba on the ipsilateral side so that you can see it when you're closing. And as I'm dissecting inferiorly here, I'm coming up on the superior aspect or the cephalad aspect of the hernia, de the midline hernia defect. I could tell from his preoperative uh, scan, although it was a couple of months prior to this operation, there was no bowel in the hernia, it was just momentum. Uh, early in my experience, whenever I did these cases, I would always drop a camera into the abdomen 
before accessing the retroactive space over concerns that I might hinge or bow that I didn't know was there. Um, now I'm, I'm no longer doing that. I find that uh, eventually at some point in the case, and you'll see in this case, you end up making a window into the peritoneal cavity and you'll get a good view at that time anyway. So just continuing to open the left uh, aspect of the posterior rectus sheath attachment to the uh, linea alba going down below the arcuate line which is coming up uh, very shortly right here and this allows me to continue to cross over the midline um, inferior to the hernia defect which is what I'm doing here that's the arcuate line on the other side So this is the hernia defect. Um, I'm, I wasn't sure initially if I was gonna be able to preserve the hernia sac. Um, you'll see I've actually already on the ipsilateral side taken down the hernia sac without even realizing it. Um, and so I know now that I'm gonna have a larger gap in the posterior um, sheath uh, that's gonna to need to be closed. So right now I'm just focusing on reducing all of the incarcerated momentum from the Swiss cheese defects. This is the rest of the posterior elements here uh, along the left side of the hernia defect. So we've got some incarcerated momentum. just slowly reducing. It's important to maintain your hemostasis because once this momentum drops back into the abdominal cavity, you might not have a good view of it and not know that something's bleeding. So with that down, I can now develop my right retrorectus space. So I'm entering into um, that right there, just um, lateral to the right side edge of the hernia defect. And I'm going to develop this space coming down. From this particular view, this is really no different than if you were doing a transdominal procedure. Um, because I had to enter into the posterior, uh, I wasn't able to get the hernia sac down, so I entered the abdominal cavity forward. And this will connect the inferior border to the midline below the hernia defect. going down to the pubic bone, did not really need to develop the space of retsius in this case because the uh, hernia was up closer to the umbilicus. This is all scarring an area where the patient had had previous laparoscopic port sinks.
So now we're just developing the rest of the right retrorectus space all the way out to the semilunar line. You can already tell that there's going to be a large gap in the posterior sheath that I have to close. Um, there are lots of ways to do it. In this particular case, given the size of the hernia and my desire to use a larger piece of mesh with narrow rectus muscles, I did decide to do a unilateral tar. There are a lot of other options that could have been done. I could have bridged the posterior defect uh, with uh, some other uh, substance before putting in my mesh, you know, some other uh, piece of mesh or micro, or, um, but I chose to do a unilateral tar. That's where you can see that big defect that definitely wasn't going to close. So now we're getting ready to do a bottoms up tar on the patient's right. Just developing the space of Bogros a little bit to start to dig a tunnel, a little cave, and now initiate the tar. keep digging that tunnel. It helps to prevent creating any posterior injuries. And allows to um, come through the lateral aspect of the uh, posterior sheath at the level of the semilunar line, or just medial to the level of the semilunar line um, a little bit more confidently. So far, I feel like it's going pretty well. I'm coming to the upper abdomen, so I'm going to start to see more of the transversus abdominis muscle itself. Uh, medially, I just got into some of it there. Um, and then typically at this point, I'll do a combined um, top-down approach to meet this uh, inferior or bottoms-up approach. Try to keep meticulous hemostasis. So you can see uh, the last little bit of the transverse abdominus that connects towards the midline here. So I'm going to have to um, finish this off. Just making a little bit more room up here towards the xiphoid and beneath. Now we'll finish off the transverse abdominus release by coming from a top down.
and that completes the division of the transversus abdominis. And now I need to just continue to dissect laterally. My goal with this is to go as far lateral as possible. That allows the posterior sheath on this side to just lay flat along the viscera. And with that, I'm getting ready to close the uh, posterior uh, sheath. I sped it, it up to about eight just because I left this as an edited video and it was quite long. This is a uh, 209 inch v -line. Um, I reduced the pressure to about 8 for this closure. And then I just tie a knot, it makes me happy. I then go ahead and start closing my anterior defect. Uh, this is a zero V-lock 18 inch. They're quite annoying to work with when you first get them started. Um, it's nice to take several throws to just help get the redundancy out of the suture. Um, and as I get to the hernia defect itself, I will start plicating it as well. I kept the pressure reduced to about 8 for this closure. You see how I'm needing to use my left hand to push up on the left rectus, recto, retro, rec, the left rectus muscle so that I could appropriately see the uh, ipsilateral edge of the um, of the rectus sheath. Um, that's where it helps to have divided the posterior sheath on the ipsilateral side by the linea alba about a centimeter away from the defect, so it doesn't retract up and beyond the muscle so that you can't see it. I know I sped this up fast. It's quite blurry because I got frustrated with the camera cleaning situation. Um, if you wanted to see it slower, you can slow it down, but my voice would sound like this. Um, and now I'm just coming from above. Uh, not much of a diastasis, but I, I chose to um, close it regardless. Sometimes uh, when you don't 
um, they end up getting particularly thin patients like this. They've got a little uh, bulge pushing up above where their hernia was just because it's more noticeable um, now that the hernia has been fixed. So I just elected to close it and run this suture back down. So I've just joined the inferior stitch. I'll tie these two together and then I'll just continue running this other suture down. So I'm pretty happy with the way things have gone. Um, I have very recently started to stop using drains even when I do a unilateral tar. I'm still using drains for bilateral tars. Um, I did not leave a drain in this case. I felt good about the hemostasis. I've got a, a 30 by, I believe, 22 um, Versatex. Um, I chose to just put it in laparoscopically. Um, I don't do anything special with the mesh in terms of uh, suture tricks or anything. Uh, I do think that having some sutures or even putting a stay suture on one end to the abdominal wall uh, can facilitate unrolling these very large pieces of mesh, but um, I just did it as you see here. So obviously this mesh is going to extend further to the side that there's a tar, um, but uh, has uh, close to eight centimeters on the left hand side as that was the width of the rectus on that side. This part of the procedure can be very frustrating. Um, I tend to go back up on the pressure to make the space uh, a little bit wider for this portion. Uh, but eventually I got the mesh to sit uh, nice and flat through the entire dissected retrorectus space. last inferior corner just needed to be straightened out. Last look. <coughs> and that's the case I hope you enjoyed.